Hello everyone and um, happy Christmas from the Irish American Heritage Museum. I'm just about ready to finish up for the week and will be closed until the 5th of January. Um, but I wanted to, you know, just say hello and actually read a story. But I was thinking too, this is my second year uh, not at home for Christmas. And of course the Irish have lots of Christmas traditions, including um, putting a candle in the window for welcome because um, of the, the Holy Family. If you're Christian, you know the story that they went from house to house. There was no welcome for them at the inn. And so, you know, as an immigrant myself, I've been thinking about that. Um, as a historian, I think about that a lot. And the mission of our museum, of course, is to kind of um, preserve and, and share the story of the contribution of Irish immigrants to America. But that makes me think often too about other immigrant groups. And so there are, of course, you know, millions of people maybe across the world displaced today because of war or hunger, weather here in our own country, down in Kentucky. So I'm thinking of all the people who can't be with their family and friends and who are somehow displaced. Um, I suppose it's reminiscent of, as I say, the first Christmas when people, Mary and Joseph, were trying to find some place to, to shelter. And I hope in those 2000 years that we've gotten better at offering a candle and a welcome. And I want to say particularly to people uh, that invited me to share their Christmas with them here in Albany because I can't go home, you know, that that was very um, meaningful and very, very appreciated. And uh, to my friends in Ireland that I'm not with, uh, we always meet at Christmas Eve usually for a drink and then go home and get vegetables ready and cherry trifle and all that. It's a mad panic night Christmas Eve always. And I know they've started that already because the, the cookies are being baked for Santa and kids are going to bed. So I just wanted to read a story uh, that my next door neighbour, John B. Keen wrote. It's one of my favourite Christmas stories and uh, tells you, I think, a little bit about my hometown, the spirit of Listowel uh, in County Kerry, where I'm from, and maybe the values of Christmas that I think are among the most important that we um, still have and I hope still share. And um, normally on Christmas Eve, I would be in John B. Keen's pub with Billy and with my friend Maura and Ashley and Suzanne. My parents would come in. We'd have a hot port. And of course, COVID has changed everything for a lot of people. Um, so this story is called Many Years Ago. Many years ago in our street, that's William Street, there, was, there lived an old woman who had but one son whose name was Jack. Jack's father had died when Jack was no more than a garçon, but Jack's mother went out to work to support her son and herself. As Jack grew older, she still went out and worked for the good reason that Jack did not like work. The people in the street used to say that Jack was only good for three things. He was good for eating, he was good for smoking, and he was good for drinking. Now to give him his due, he never beat his mother or abused her verbally. All he did was to skedaddle to England when she was too old to go out to work. Every Christmas she would stand inside her window waiting for a card or a letter, but she waited in vain. When Christmas came to our street, it came with a loud laugh and an expansive humour that healed old wounds and lifted the hearts of young and old. If the Christmas that came to our street were a person, he would be something like this. He would be in his sixties, but glowing with rude health. His face would be flushed and chubby with sideburns down to the rim of his jaws. He would be wearing gaiters and a bright tweed suit, and he would be mildly intoxicated. His pockets would be filled with silver coins for small boys and girls. And for the older folk, he would have a party at which he would preside with his waistcoated paunch extending benignly and his posterior benefiting from the glow of a roaring log fire. There would be punch for everybody and there would be roast geese and ducks, their beautiful golden cemeteries exposed in large dishes and tantalizing gobs of potato stuffing oozing and bursting from their rear end stitches. There would be singing and storytelling and laughter and perhaps a tear here and there when absent friends were toasted. There would be gifts for everybody and there would be great goodwill as neighbours embraced, promising to cherish each other truly till another 12 months had passed. However, Christmas is an occasion and not a person. A person can do things, change things, create things, but all our occasions are only what we want them to be. For this reason, Jack's mother waited Christmas after Christmas for word of her wandering boy. To other houses would come stout registered envelopes from distant loved ones who remembered. They would be bristling, crumpling envelopes from America with noble rectangular checks and crisp, clean dollars to delight the eye and comfort the soul. 
There would be parcels and packages of all shapes and sizes, so that every house became a warehouse until the great day came when all the goods could be distributed. Now it happened that in our street there was a postman who knew a lot more about its residents than they knew about themselves. When Christmas came, he was weighed down with bags of letters and parcels. People awaited his arrival the way children awaited the bishop on confirmation day. He was not averse to indulging in a drop of comforts wherever such comforts were tendered, but comforts or no, the man was always sensitive to the needs of others. In his heart resided the spirit of Christmas. Whenever he came to the house where the old woman lived, he would almost crawl on all fours past the windows. He just didn't have the heart to go by and be seen by her. He hated to disappoint people, particularly old people. For the whole week before Christmas, she would take up her position behind the faded curtain, waiting for the letter which never came. Finally, the postman could bear it no longer. On Christmas Eve, he delivered to our house a mixed bunch of cards and letters, some were from England, and he requested one of the envelopes when its contents were removed. He rewrote the name and address, and he wrote a short note which he signed, Your Loving Son Jack. Then from his pocket, he extracted a ten shilling note, a considerable sum in those far off days. He placed the note in the envelope. There was no fear the old woman would notice the handwriting, because if Jack was good at some things, as I already mentioned, he was not good at other things, and one of those things was writing. In fact, Jack could not write his own name. When the postman came to the old woman's door, he knocked loudly. When she appeared, he put on his best official voice and said, Sign for this, if you please, missus. The old woman signed and opened the envelope. The tears appeared in her eyes, and she cried out loud, I declare to God, but Jack's a scholar. True for you, said the postman, and I dare say he couldn't get in touch with you until he learned to write. I always knew there was good in him, she said. I always knew it. There's good in everyone, missus, said the postman, as he moved on to the next house. The street was not slow in getting the message, and in the next and last post there were many parcels for the old woman. It was probably the best Christmas the street ever had. So, with the very traditional Irish welcome, you know, the, the Cade Mule of a 100,000 welcomes, I think that postman kind of uh, captured that spirit. So Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope you all have a great holiday, a peaceful and happy and healthy new year. Let's see what 2022 brings us. But um, thank you all for your support of the museum. As you know, we've kind of transitioned to being mainly online this year with different events and things, but we do hope to get our final and permanent exhibition installed early next year and move on from strength to strength. So to all of our members and the partners that we've collaborated this year, to all of our supporters, the board of the museum, and as I say, my own family and friends, the staff and volunteers who work there, I want to thank everybody for their support during 2021. Wish you a happy Christmas this year, and we'll see you next year, I hope. Take care, everyone. See you in 2022.